Hello, welcome to Home Care Connection. My name is Harry Snyder and I'm your host. And this month, or rather than being in the studio at the other end of the building, uh, we are here to do a cooking show. Uh, the theme of this cooking show is uh, easy cooking for the busy caregiver. Uh, and today, uh, I hope uh, to be able to make for you uh, three uh, items. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a meal, but you certainly uh, could consider it to be a meal. Um, I'm going to start uh, with one of my uh, favorite things to make. I have a sweet tooth. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to start with one of my favorite uh, cookies. Uh, this is a classic Toll House cookie. Uh, one of the most uh, fun parts about making cookies uh, is that you really get to get uh, your hands dirty. Uh, and, and this recipe, so this is a, a, a Toll House type uh, cookie. Uh, in this particular case, uh, rather than traditional chocolate chips, I use um, white chocolate chips, but uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, it starts off with a half a pound of butter, uh, which is two full sticks of butter. Uh, one of the things that's really important when you're making cookies uh, is to make sure uh, that the, the butter is at room temperature. Uh, so we've had the butter out uh, for a little while. Uh, it's, nice and, um, it's nice and soft uh, and ready to go. And uh, the first thing you do, when, anytime you make cookies, there's usually two steps to it. Uh, step one is the, if you will, the wet uh, materials, and step two is the dry materials. So we'll start with the wet materials. Uh, that is a half a pound of butter. Uh, it is also um, some sugar. Uh, and the sugar uh, is both brown sugar and white sugar, or, or granulated sugar. And for the brown sugar, we use a cup of brown sugar. And brown sugar is always something you have to, when you're, when you're taking it out, uh, you want to make sure uh, that you press it in uh, because, because really uh, it's not anywhere near as sweet as um, granulated sugar. Uh, and when it says a cup, it means usually a pressed cup. Uh, so, so that's what we're doing here is uh, just making a nice pressed cup of, of brown sugar. Uh, that goes right in with the butter. And then uh, it also calls for a half a cup of granulated sugar. Now, uh, recipes for Toll House cookies tend to vary. Uh, a lot of times, it'll actually call for three quarters of a cup of each. Uh, personally, um, I like uh, the type of sweetness that uh, brown sugar uh, offers to a cookie, so I use um, a whole cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of granulated sugar, but uh, if you follow the Toll House recipe, uh, you'll find that it says three quarters of a cup of each. Uh, it also uh, requires uh, two eggs. So we're going to put the two eggs in. Uh, and it also uh, calls for um, vanilla extract. And I will tell you right now, uh, vanilla extract is one of the more important flavorings in a Toll House cookie. Uh, it, it is a teaspoon of, of vanilla extract. Uh, you can get a real vanilla extract. You can get imitation vanilla extract, uh, there probably are uh, some small differences in flavor, but generally speaking, when it comes to baking, uh, not so much. And now, uh, it calls for a teaspoon, uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that uh, if you let it overflow a little bit and you put in a little bit more than a teaspoon, uh, it will never hurt uh, the recipe. Uh, now uh, comes the fun part, because uh, you got to mix the stuff up. Now, don't be afraid to do it with your hands. Um, it is uh, about as much fun as you can have uh, when you're baking. Uh, this is gooey, and, and, um, and by the way, uh, you want to talk about a, a pre-completion uh, treat. Uh, so with this butter and the sugar um, and the eggs, uh, in essence, what you have here uh, is a really, really sweet, uh, rich uh, bunch of, of paste because it's, it's butter um, and sugar and uh, eggs, and uh, even just taking the stuff off your fingers uh, is, you're gonna find uh, it's very tasty. Um, you know, I always just wanna uh, be careful, but you, the, the goal here is really just to get the, the wet materials mixed together uh, and uh, into um, a nice uh, sort of thick uh, goo, 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, we will uh, have to, um, uh, I will have to wash my hands, so just bear with me for a second. Okay, uh, so with, with the uh, wet uh, part of the cookie done, uh, we just need to uh, take care of the dry parts. Uh, the dry parts for this particular recipe are really uh, simple and straightforward. It's two and a quarter cups of flour, all-purpose flour is fine. Um, and again, that's just, you know, just, just you should always uh, measure out uh, your uh, um, materials because uh, you don't want the cookies to be too dry, you don't want them to be uh, too moist, but uh, two and a quarter cups of, of flour, uh, and that's that. Uh, a, a teaspoon of baking powder, uh, and again, that's just, um, you just get it in and, and you just use the, the can itself uh, to level off the teaspoon. Um, and, and then uh, you are ready. Now, uh, you can uh, sift uh, this if you wish, but uh, I usually don't because um, it mixes together quite well. Uh, and now, uh, we're just simply going to mix the dry materials in with the wet materials uh, and then um, stir them around. And the, the reason why we, I, I wanted to make this cookie for you for this show uh, is just to show you how uh, simple and easy it is to make uh, Toll House cookies. Um, this is going to, um, you know, air in uh, straight time and, and what you'll see uh, in a matter of minutes uh, is that uh, we have Toll House cookies. Uh, and they only take uh, just a few minutes to cook, uh, usually uh, around uh, 10 minutes or so uh, in the oven. Uh, so, and, and usually a standard batch of Toll House cookies uh, makes three dozen uh, normal size, well, whatever they consider to be normal size, which is basically like a, a little ball. Um, I'll show you in a moment what, what that looks like. Uh, but once you get the flour mixed in uh, pretty well, uh, you want to add the remaining ingredients to uh, the Toll House cookies. And again, uh, if you want to uh, do this with your hands, uh, that's great. If you have, uh, as I do now, uh, a rubber uh, spoon, that works good. Um, a wooden spoon also works well. Uh, you don't want to use metal uh, in your cookies. Uh, you just don't. You don't want the, that uh, metal uh, flavor to be part of it. Uh, but as you can see, it's becoming nice and uh, thick and, uh, and, and still quite pasty, which is exactly what you want because uh, when it's cooking, this, these particular cookies don't use a greased uh, pan. Now this is, this is a 12-ounce uh, um, bag of uh, white chocolate morsels, and this is a 10-ounce um, bag of chopped walnuts. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, putting nuts into your cookies, um, obviously it's always optional, uh, but um, uh, traditional Toll House cookies uh, are made with walnuts, uh, anywhere from um, uh, six to eight uh, to ten ounces of walnuts uh, is more than adequate. Again, um, if, if I'm going to show you how uh, I do this at home, uh, it's, it's with my hands uh, because, because this is what you really want to do. You want to make sure that you get uh, everything, all the ingredients mixed together. Um, Toll House cookies are certainly a uh, tradition. Um, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a holiday season tradition, uh, but it certainly is in my house. Uh, we make Toll House cookies every year. Uh, started when our kids were really young, um, and they are part of, my son and daughter have always been part of our holiday uh, cookie season time. Uh, the, this is now uh, done. So uh, again, uh, just for the purposes of television, I will uh, just rinse my hands off and show you uh, how to um, uh, make the cookies and, and put them on a the pan. We'll get them in the oven, and then we have a couple more dishes to work on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so when it comes to, uh, you do want to have a, a nice thick cookie sheet, which this is. As I said to you, it doesn't have to be greased. Um, making the cookies is pretty simple. Uh, you're just taking uh, the cookie dough uh, and turning it into a little uh, meatball, uh, which, uh, you know, is actually one of the themes of the show is meatball. So uh, these are about meatball sized. Um, you can usually fit 
a dozen on a cookie tray, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make one dozen of these, although, as I said to you earlier, the recipe uh, does um, make three dozen. Now, obviously, if you make the cookies bigger, uh, then it will make less than that. So uh, that really depends on how you want to make them. Um, if you want uh, really big cookies, uh, the only other thing you just want to be careful of if you make the cookies much bigger than this uh, is uh, cooking time because they will take uh, considerably longer to cook and you, and, uh, you don't want to burn uh, the bottom of the cookie because uh, one thing I can tell you having had it happen to me uh, more times than I'd like to admit uh, is that when you burn the bottom of the cookie uh, for all intents and purposes uh, you've uh, ruined uh, the cookies um, and so. Um, with all the work that you put into it, um, you'd rather end up with uh, a, a good finished product. Uh, but as I said, uh, it'll fit a dozen on the cookie tray. Uh, you want to cook these at uh, 375, uh, 375 degrees, uh, usually for about uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, once you see the edge of the cookie getting a little brown, you know pretty much they're ready to go. Um, and uh, you can take them out. So uh, into the oven they go. Uh, and we will come back to those uh, momentarily. Okay, now uh, we are going to make um, meatballs. Uh, our, our, our main course uh, for today is uh, meatballs and baked ziti. Uh, the water is boiling for the baked ziti. We'll get to that momentarily. Uh, but the meatballs, now uh, I would say to you um, that these are uh, traditional Italian meatballs, meaning uh, that they're made with both beef and pork. Um, super easy to make, uh, takes very little prep time. And the great thing about meatballs is this, uh, and you'll see this as we move through the show. Uh, we did get the flame on underneath the, the frying pan. Uh, we just wanna get a little bit of olive oil into uh, the frying pan uh, because um, to cook the meatballs, we will first brown them uh, and then we'll go from there. So to cook the meatballs, it's it's, it's basically uh, five ingredients. It is an onion, uh, which I will dice for you momentarily. Okay, so one onion, uh, diced relatively small. It, you can, again, this is something that's gonna be based purely on whatever your tastes are. Uh, it is also, uh, so one egg, which we'll put in. Uh, the egg uh, will keep your meatballs nice and moist, uh, as will the onion. Um, now, so this recipe, again, as I said, pretty simple. Uh, straightforward, uh, a pound of chopped beef uh, and a pound of ground pork. Um, I, I think what you'll find uh, as you, uh, if you make meatballs um, or if you don't, uh, what you'll find is, is that when you mix uh, the ground beef with the ground pork, uh, you'll find that the flavoring is really good. A little bit of salt, and again, salt obviously is one of those um, ingredients that, you know, depending on one's health or any number of things, uh, you don't have to put salt in, but, uh, you know, it certainly helps for flavoring. Uh, a little bit of ground pepper. And then uh, a really important ingredient is breadcrumbs. Um, if you don't use breadcrumbs in your meatballs, uh, what you will find is, is that they tend to be very dense. Um, and if you use uh, breadcrumbs, what you'll find is, is that the meatballs stay nice and light. Even though uh, they might be um, um, big, uh, they will still be um, um, lighter and fluffier. And, and it's, just, it's just a cup, just a straight cup of, 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 um, of breadcrumbs. Uh, again, um, usually uh, you use what they call seasoned breadcrumbs, which is uh, pretty much an Italian seasoning. Uh, again, as you can see, one of the themes of the show today is hands-on cooking. 
Um, not only uh, is it fun, uh, but also uh, it also makes it very, very quick to get all of the um, ingredients put together. Uh, our pan is very well heated at this point. The, the, the meatballs are uh, just about ready to be made. Now, as I said to you, it, it's, it's important when you're making meatballs, uh, you just want to lightly form them um, because uh, you don't want them too dense. Uh, and what we're going to do is, is we're going to put these meatballs into the frying pan uh, and because you always want to brown your meatballs before you do anything with them. Now, um, you could bake them uh, if you were so inclined once this was over. In other words, uh, once the, um, the browning is completed, uh, you could just actually just uh, drain a bit of the oil out and uh, take them and put them into the oven in, in the pan that they're in. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is something a little bit different. And that's simply because I just want to show you a couple of different uh, ways to um, uh, make the meatballs um, because we were looking to have you be able to do this like say on a Sunday or whenever you have a couple of extra minutes. Um, and meatballs like the baked ziti, uh, super easy to make uh, and, um, and refrigerate well. Uh, cooked uh, beef refrigerates well and, um, and the ziti uh, can be stored uh, in a refrigerator after it's done uh, very easily. And as you can see, we're just filling up the pan uh, with meatballs. We're packing them very lightly so it's not, you're not making like a snowball here. Uh, you're making a very uh, loose fitting, uh, loose uh, together meatball. Uh, but you know, uh, you want them to be meatballs, so you want them you know, nice and round, uh, which is exactly what we're doing. Uh, and um, I think we are uh, at capacity. We have one more meatball to put in. Uh, and then, uh, as the meatballs are browning, uh, we'll go uh, and take care of uh, the ziti. So we're just going to take a, a box of, of ziti, uh, put it into boiling water. Um, generally speaking, you just want to make, a, so it's a pound of ziti uh, is the recipe. Uh, we also, uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, two jars of tomato sauce. Uh, so we're going to just, we want to heat up the tomato sauce a little bit. But remember, uh, everything is going to be going into the oven. Uh, so, so nothing to worry about uh, when it comes to that. Um, the water's boiling. The, the, um, the pasta is in. You do, you do want to uh, turn your, um, your meatballs. You want them to brown on all sides. Uh, so it really doesn't matter how you flip them. Uh, if you get them flipped over, if you get them on the side, um, because before you're done with them, uh, you want to make sure that they've been browned uh, all the way around. Um, and, and by searing them at a high temperature, uh, you're also locking in the moisture that we um, partly uh, secured by putting in the onion and also partly secured by putting in the egg. Um, so if you can see uh, what this looks like, uh, you can see that, that they're already browned very nicely uh, on one side. Um, and uh, they are browning on the other side. Uh, we have our ziti, uh, which uh, is boiling and will be ready in just a minute. So um, we will uh, stay here for just a second or two, and um, then uh, I'll put together the ziti. OK, so uh, I think we're ready to construct the ziti now. Uh, so that's pretty. Uh, simple. Um, safety first. Uh, let's get on our uh, mitts. Um, now, uh, one of the secrets uh, to making baked ziti and something to always remember uh, about, about any time you cook pasta uh, and then bake it uh, is that you always want the uh, pasta to be not 100% cooked. So um, traditional pasta is cooked al dente. It means to the tooth. Uh, it means there's a little bit of a bite to it. Uh, when you make uh, baked ziti or any type of baked noodle other than uh, lasagna, um, you want to have it a little uh, even more uh, thick. So we'll pour that out. Now, um, 
We're going to use a, a small baking pan uh, to make this with. A couple of things about, about, obviously this could be a square pan, it could be um, a, a glass, it doesn't matter. Um, you want to always layer uh, the bottom of the pan uh, with some sauce. Uh, so uh, you want to get the sauce inside the bottom of the pan um, and then, um, and again, this is how easy it is to make baked ziti. Oh, also, uh, never use a metal spoon in tomato sauce. Uh, you'll, you'll taste the, the tin. It just, it, it's the way it interacts with the, um, with the, uh, with the uh, tomatoes, with the acid. Um, pour your ziti into your pan. Uh, then, um, again, so a pound of ziti. Uh, then you want, you, we have um, uh, eight ounces of mozzarella cheese. Uh, shredded uh, much easier than uh, shredding it yourself, but uh, if you wish to, uh, certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, so get that in and you just, you just drop it right in. Uh, some, in this case, we have some grated or Romano uh, cheese. Um, you can get it uh, in, in a package like this, or you can get it uh, in uh, a number of different ways. Uh, and again, you just want to sprinkle that on. Uh, the Romano and the Parmesan give a nice extra flavor. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take not the remainder of the sauce, but a, a portion of it, and just pour it right on top of the, um, of the ziti, uh, because, the, because the sauce will sink through. Uh, and then, uh, just for uh, good measure, uh, we'll take a little bit more cheese uh, and, just, and just sprinkle it across uh, the top of the sauce. And now, uh, we're going to put it into the oven and uh, show you a couple of things. So first, um, first, our cookies are done. So I just want to show you uh, that. I'm going to take these out for right now and let them sit for a second and cool um, because I just want to finish up with the meatballs. So the meatballs are done. They've, they've been browned on all sides. Uh, they are uh, in the pan, and as I said to you, if you wanted to just have plain meatballs, you could just take this pan, put it right into the oven, um, and cook it for another, say, 15 minutes just to make sure uh, that it's cooked all the way through. Uh, but what I like to do uh, is uh, I actually take my meatballs, and once they've been browned, uh, I put them into uh, my tomato sauce, uh, set the, the a flame on, on low to medium so that it just simmers. Uh, and about a half hour from now, uh, we will have uh, meatballs marinara. Uh, and if you can see this, uh, they're just going to sit in the sauce. I'll, I'll turn the flame off uh, of these uh, meatballs. Um, and let's just say that we'll put those in the oven. Uh, these meatballs will cook in the sauce. Whether you want to have them with uh, the baked ziti, whether you want to have them as a sub sandwich, a grinder, a hero, depending on your geographic uh, hoagie, uh, depending on your geographic area, uh, your, and, and again, a little bit of mozzarella, uh, some tin foil, and you have uh, a meatball parmesan hero. Uh, this, uh, just for the purposes of being able to show you a finished product, uh, we had cooked uh, the ziti uh, just prior to the show, and I just took it out a minute ago. So this is what uh, the baked ziti looks like. Uh, the cheese is all melted. There's sauce uh, on the top. There's sauce on the bottom, uh, and uh, and can be served. Um, it, again, an easy thing to make. Uh, takes no time to cook. Uh, always very tasty. If if you if you don't finish your ziti uh, in your first serving, depending on how many people you are serving. Uh, a really great way to reheat something like ziti or something like that um, is actually uh, to take a frying pan, uh, put a little bit of water at the bottom of the frying pan, um, take whatever portion you want to reheat and put that into the water and then put a lid on the frying pan. Cook that for about uh, three to five minutes. Uh, it'll keep the noodles from drying out. Uh, it'll keep the cheese um, nice and melted, and it will be super easy to make uh, for uh, leftovers. Also, uh, as promised, uh, the cookies are done. Um, when you make 
uh, Toll House cookies, this is what the bottom should look like, uh, golden brown, um, solid. You always want to give cookies uh, a few minutes to uh, sit when they're done, uh, but uh, I would say that this uh, would be a scrumptious uh, Toll House cookie, uh, and I suppose uh, it only makes sense to just try one before we go off the air, so uh, I will. And why I like Toll House cookies is they're crispy, they're chewy, um, and I love white chocolate. Uh, so uh, there you have it, um, Toll House cookies made uh, during the course of the show. That's how easy they are to make. Baked ziti made during the course of the show. That's how easy it is to make uh, meatballs and meatballs marinara. Uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, joining us today in the kitchen. Uh, I hope that uh, you have a, a wonderful holiday season, and I hope uh, you take a little bit of time uh, during your busy schedule of caring for a loved one uh, to just um, go out, uh, get some ingredients, come back, uh, and make yourself a wonderful, warm, uh, easy uh, uh, winter meal. I'm Harry Snyder for Home Care Connection. Thank you for joining us, uh, and we'll see you next time.